This might get weird. Are we rolling? We're rolling. Oh, cheers, Grace Helbig. Cheers, baby. Uh, welcome to the world of my biggest seltzer of all time. Wow. That is, yeah, incredible. I realize I just haven't really drank water in a few days. And this is how you do this it now. Like, now it's yeah. like it's either a drought or a flood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those are my only two modes of hydration. We live on one end of the spectrum. Mm-hmm. We love pendulums because they swing from side to side. They swing all over. I also love that we're both in button up patterned short sleeve shirts. No, I looked at the little monitor before we started filming and I was like, I saw me in this Hawaiian shirt, which, by the way, was chips. Oh, like, that was actually was chip chips. Shirt? He wore it. He got Cute. it when we went to Mexico. When we went to Puerto Vallarta with you and Elliot. Cute. And oh, uh, he bought it there. No, no, no. We we did a vacation outfit shopping trip oh, before we oh, went. Oh, yeah. And loved this on him, but it shrank just a little bit. Mm. And so he was giving it to Goodwill. Mm. And I said, "Oh no, you don't. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it in my back seat for about two months." <laughs> Like, I'm going to drop it at Goodwill, and then I'm going to take it. But he also was giving up the shirt, the striped green shirt that Elliot also has. Yeah. I'm going to show up Twins in with Elliot one day. Uh, he'll love it. That's, yeah. Uh, green stripes are Elliot's go-to. Uh, yeah, I've decided I've left my house. I've gone to the other side of the country. Oh, and we're so in Boston. We're, we're in Boston, We're in Boston, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so I should dress like a, I'm a person that leaves my house. Oh, no. See, this trip, which you guys were finally doing the East Coast shows, Boston, bang, bang, New York, bang, bang, Philly, bang, bang, three nights in a row. Okay. And I was like, I need all the room I can have for yeah. stuff for our show. And yeah. I don't want to check bags and all that jazz because everything costs a million dollars now. Yeah. So all I packed was black leggings and t-shirts same that's all i have uh other than like this button-up shirt okay. one other semi-decent shirt if i see family um and the rest is all show stuff all the time and mm-hmm. already i had to sit on my suitcase to zip it up to really? get to the airport already? so i'm already compromised i hope you don't get a fan letter well, you know, I will throw away the gross leggings that there we go. <laughs> need to be thrown away to make room. No, mine are like fully like four for ten dollars from yep, Amazon. That's like, mine too. I'm like, look, I it's I'm never known for like the height of fashion, but I remember that point when you look at your mom and you're like, oh, we're in it, we're just in a legging a legging for a long time phase, yep. and I'm like, hit it. Yeah, I remember the I'm leggings there. with the stirrups. I had those. Stirrup pants? Why? I know mm. they've, like, as I feel a, like they flirted with a resurgence, but it never came full circle. As someone that has long legs, mm. we're often the part of the jean or the legging that's meant to hit the yeah. ankle, it hits the calf. I would love a stirrup situation to a, keep it down there in case of the non flooding situation. I need a stirrup pant because I'm a bad ankle shaver. Oh, that too. Yeah, huh. that too. My that ankles. one bone. That one bone. That should stay hairy. <laughs> thing has a full. What's it called? The thing that you put your hands in. The muff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a what it looks like muff, down there. A full ankle warmer. Um, no, I also know that I'm getting. Uh, to be uh, like my mother no she's actually not like this at all but like an older woman because right before you got here because I apologize for the smell uh, there's yeah. a <laughs> that can be interpreted <laughs> so many various ways yeah I want to hear what you're going to say and then I'll say what my well, side of the story was I got here um, to this hotel that is so overpriced because it's MIT's graduation and it's basically Supposedly. a best it's a best western in drag yeah yeah. Is the best Western in drag. In in questionable drag. Yeah, yeah. in first time drag. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's beside a Whole Foods. So I was like, fuck, I'm starving. I gotta go get some food. Mm-hmm. And you know what looked really good? Obviously. Was the corn and potato chowder. In eighty degree weather. Listen! Clear skies. Uh, look, I hit New England. You got the chowder. I don't do clams. So I said, that chowder sure looks like <laughs> that, that. They had a carrot ginger. I said, no, bitch, we ain't in L.A. Uh-uh. I, I want a, mil- a milky, milky, thick soup. Yeah. Right. Chunky, chunky. Which, yeah, it was. They do. They did keep the Whole Foods co- cold. I think maybe that might be a tactic in grocery stores is I was like, oh, I want cold enough that you feel like you can eat something yes. super warm. Yeah. Because they always have their like Indian food bar. Yeah. You're not going to buy an Indian food when it's warm out. No, no, no. However, <laughs> they'll manipulate you well, into buying it. However, I spent the night at my friend Megan's last uh, the past two nights in yeah. New York. 
work and we got drunk the first night I got here obviously <laughs> you have to we hadn't seen each other in like nine months yeah we got drunk and she rolls out of the bedroom so hungover like we drank so much champagne oh. she rolls out she's like oh she was like I haven't had a hangover in like a year and a half I'm dead I was like oh I'm so sorry and then her sweet Australian boyfriend Alex comes out with a spice grinder goes give this a whiff and he had ground and toasted Indian spices <gasps> to make doll from scratch oh my like, god and, and so we, we were like Jesus and then he starts cooking it then it's a tiny New York apartment we were like this is the worst thing you could have done. <laughs> we are both very hungover, and you've decided to make an Indian lentil stew from scratch. <laughs> that is, in theory, it seems like that would be healing. Yeah, but like, but what I'm saying is like, it was hot. I like sweated through the oh, night, yeah, yeah. and then you, you don't want like those warming spices. No. Well, that's. Uh, have you been watching All Stars this season? Oh my god. Uh, because Jada Essence Hall keeps giving people shots of tahini, tahini, tahini. to take before, and she's like, "This will wake you up." This I wakes me up. And everyone's like, "What's in it?" She's like, "I don't know spices." <laughs> Everyone's it's the cutest thing ever. She's doing like little like I hand love it. And to bumps. be honest, I'm really curious about doing it. It's just spice. I mean, like I'll put tahini on the rim of a margarita. Yeah. And it has like dehydrated citrus, like that kind of citric acid. Like, you know, that makes you like your mouth water just thinking about it. Yeah. It's delicious. OK, but quick thing. So maybe it is a theory that maybe they keep like hot bar and soup areas. That would make sense. Colder. So you want to eat it. Yeah. But so I was like, oh, I want this chowder. Right. Yeah. But then I knew I was becoming uh, an older woman <laughs> besides like me wearing a Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Besides you uh, hiding your boyfriend's shirt for two weeks in the back of your car no. so that he wouldn't see. No, I wasn't. Oh, we misinterpreted that story. Oh, I was doing him a favor by dropping off his goodwill. Right. But I just didn't do it for two months. Oh, oh, I thought that you were hiding no. it till you forgot about it. And, and then, then you I kept... wear it in this public forum. This public forum. <laughs> now I get the chowder and I go to check out and I go, Soop. and you know, and it was like six ninety nine, and I was like, "Well, that's very exact for weight." And I asked the lady, "I was like, are these containers?" I thought it was the hot bar. It's based on weight, or is it based on container? She goes, "No, the soup is based on container." I said, "Well, I didn't fill it up all the way," and so I went back to. The- <laughs> it was only it was like two thirds full, and so I said, "Well, I said, am I allowed to go back and chop it off?" She said, yeah, whatever you want to do. And I was like, okay. And as I walked over there, I, I like had the receipt in hand in case so anyone questioned me. Waving it around case, like a pride flag. In case anyone <laughs> questioned me. I said, oh, wait. And are the oyster crackers free? <laughs> you really adopted a New England personality completely. Completely. And then when you, when you turned on the camera and I saw my uh, oh. Hawaiian shirt, I was like, you know, it'd be a good... Um, drag king name hmm. or drag name Weird Al Yankovic <laughs> uh, well well mm, no, could be a little problematic the Yankovic but... doesn't sound good Skankovic okay. Weird Al Skankovic okay what does skank mean <laughs> that's a verb I'm, no I don't need it to be a verb I'm just trying to get to Yankovic yeah. Yankovic well, Weird Al Skanky Bitch Weird Al Skanky Bitch <laughs> okay we got there what, or wank a bitch. Oh, you're right. Yank wasn't good, but Weird Al Skanky Bitch <laughs> is my alter ego. The chowder eating whore uh, of West Boston. Uh, yeah, no, I was um, <laughs> visiting my brother this afternoon. I know. Hello, Tim. Shout out. You don't listen, but we're doing it anyway. He does listen. Does he? Avid listener. <gasps> uh, which Hi, I Tim. love so much. Uh, I was over there having a little wine in the afternoon. Oh, I knew it. Uh, and got this text from Mamrie when I was like, <laughs> I'll, I'll come to you. We're trying to figure out where to go. We're in different hotels. And she goes, uh, apologies that my room <laughs> smells like soup. Ha ha. There's a Whole Foods right behind me. And I just grubbed up <laughs> or grubbed out. <laughs> I was like telling Tim, I was like, all right, Mary seems to be okay with me taking an Uber to her place, but she really wants me to know that her room well, smells like soup, let- which makes me wonder, is it something else that it smells like that she's blaming oh, no. on soup? No, I would never be like, I just had some chowder and you walk in and go like, that's diarrhea. <laughs> As someone that knows what that smells like, I know also how you try to 
cover a smell like that. No, listen, I'm just saying when you walk into someone's hotel room just, and like, there's distinctly food smell when you were expecting clean sheets. Well, it was great too. Vacuum floors. I got off the elevator. I turned to the left. There's just You just followed the shower no, smell. There's an empty hallway <laughs> and a Whole Foods crumpled bag outside of one room. Everything else is pristine. Uh, I was like, let me guess. I think that's Mary's room. <laughs> but I also I also got a salad bar, right? Yeah. I got, you know, like a kale mixture and some toppings. And then not a fork in the joint. Uh, you know how they have those machines where you like yep. hit it or like a drink machine yeah, almost yeah, yeah. button? Three in a row. Nothing. I'm like, maybe uh-uh. there'll be another one at the other exit. Yeah. I go there three in a row nothing. no i said no forks in here they said no <laughs> forks which was fine i'm fine eating salad oh, what I do? i'm fine eating salad with my hand until i kill but i'm like oh there's a, a whole boiled egg in this one. Oh, i've done that so then i'm breaking it up <laughs> that, that was me last night i landed at mid boiled uh, eggs i landed at midnight Got to my hotel at 1 a.m. Was like, Did you book that flight or was your flight delayed? No, I booked that flight. Damn. And I thought that like, I guess I, I just didn't, you know, really process the time on everything. Actually, it worked out great because I was okay, okay. tired. Uh, I got to the hotel and I just kind of assumed that maybe they'd have like a little market situation or you something. You hope so. Not a thing. But they right. did say that table over there in the lobby is where they drop off the... You know, anything oh. that you order from Postmates. Oh, that's nice to have like a specific drop yeah, off place. This is, I was like, I looked over there, just this like rickety table. I was like, oh, oh. that's the food delivery table. Mm, okay. The card table. So I ordered some chicken, uh, buffalo chicken wings and a salad. Boneless or bone in? Boneless. Okay. And I was like, who are you? I was hungry because I just <laughs> housed pretzels and Chex Mix. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you about the plane situation. But, oh, God. Uh, ordered caesar salad chicken caesar salad and then was truly uh opened it up when it got to my room and i was like ah, i have no utensils i'm going to have to eat this with my fingers here we go i've done Pinch. this a million times Pinch. before done this a million if times. you've ever passed my car in traffic in la yeah i'm eating a salad with oh, my hands you get the big romaine you use it as a little <laughs> lettuce wrap you scoop up a little bit of everything yeah. you wash your hands after you gotta do it yeah yeah it i great. just right i didn't even do all my hands i just did the pinchers well i also I just rinse the pinchers i take two little croutons like a tiny <laughs> little sandwich yeah. and then i put a little chicken on it a little yeah. lettuce on it and then i'm making little sandwiches for like lego that's size people up. that's what's up and it makes me take my time yeah and not shovel my food in my mouth I like agree. a pig at a trough i agree oh man yeah but so Ooh. i had to give you the heads up on the soup smell i appreciate it you don't want to walk into it just a a, a cloud of milk based Honestly, Chowder? I haven't smelled it at all. Really? Didn't Get out of here. Anything. I think the milky soups don't have uh, as much of a pungent smell as no like garlic. the tomato, garlicky kind of oh, stuff does. Oh, yeah, the onion. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, we are. <laughs> we are, Anne. We're talking about HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. You can skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one food kit. Also, if you're going away this summer, you can update your delivery address and enjoy HelloFresh at your vacation destination with just a click. Plans are flexible, so they work with your changing schedule. And HelloFresh is 72 percent for all my statistics fans out there cheaper than dining at a restaurant and is even cheaper than grocery shopping that's money back in your pocket you can customize your favorite dishes with new hello custom offerings by swapping out one protein or side for another upgrading a more luxe experience or even adding protein to a veggie meal that means more choices more variety and more meals truly tailored to you you guys know i love HelloFresh. i actually made their grilled chicken and steak fajitas last week for Elliot and I, and it was so fun. It felt like I was at insert name of chain restaurant that I worked at when I was 16 to 18 years old here and it was delicious so if you are interested at all in HelloFresh go to hellofresh.com slash tmgw16 and use code tmgw16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts again go to hellofresh.com slash tmgw16 and use code tmgw16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts why not 
Let's be honest, shopping for wine is a little overwhelming. There's all these different varietals of grapes, there's all these different regions and countries, and then every single label is different. It is stimulus overload, and sometimes it feels like you have to be an expert or have a degree in grapes to find a great wine. You can shop by label, I guess, but I've heard, don't judge a book by its cover. So there's got to be a way to make it easier, and that's why First Leaf does the hard work for you. They make it simple to discover new wines you're gonna love without the chance of hit or miss. There is nothing worse than buying a bottle of wine saying, hey, I'll pay a little extra for the fancy stuff, and then it sucks. First Leaf samples over 10,000 wines a year from around the world and selects only the finest bottles. They take the time to learn what you like and what you don't, then send you world-class wines tailored to your taste. What I love about First Leaf is that you get to try things that you might never have tried, but then also put in your preferences. So I like my reds from California. I like whites from France. And recently, I really like sparkling from Spain. I'm really getting into cava. You heard it here first, breaking news. So I can get a little bit of each and not feel like I am completely putting all my eggs in one basket or all my money into one bottle of wine because it is so affordable. They have deals with winemakers so that you are getting the best price possible. And if you're not happy with the wine you receive, First Leaf will credit you for another. It does not get simpler than that. Sign up today and you're going to get your first six bottles for $29.95 plus free shipping. Go to tryfirstleaf.com slash T-M-G-W. That's T-R-Y-F-I-R-S-T-L-E-A-F.com slash T-M-G-W to get your first six bottles of wine for $29.95 plus free shipping. That is an amazing deal. You are going to be the hit of the party or the hit of your own couch by yourself. Try firstleaf.com slash TMGW. I saw this tweet before you came over and it Uh made me laugh so hard I screen grabbed it. Okay. I don't even follow this person. Like now Twitter's all fucked up where it's like (laughs) everything is. My Instagram feed is showing me all these people that I'm like, did I drunk follow this person? No, this is just a random like recommendation. I, I don't like it. I hate it. And now it shows you like reply like it shows you if someone you follow replies to someone you don't it'll show you their reply and i'm like i barely know this motherfucker yeah and now i'm seeing what he replies to with one word no i don't like it you know what i mean it's too i mean i like it when it's michael buckley because he's always just being like you look great yeah and i'm like i'm glad point but this one i didn't know the person but the tweet he goes handed a date my phone so he could pick a place for takeout and postmate showed him a huge pop-up that said i ordered soup dumplings three days straight then basically said i was the number one dumpling orderer in the city and asked if i wanted to send a personal message to the restaurant wait you can send a personal message i guess if you're like like the number one fan if you're the number one orderer on Bozo, could you imagine handing a date and they're like, so um, do Wait. you want to send Dumpling House a message of gratitude since you're their number one orderer? Wait, why did he give this person his phone? To, to be like, with- like, it was probably like a Netflix and chill or a Discovery Plus. Oh, take a look at my sweat. phone. No, it was like, hey, we're ordering. Do you want to order from dumplings and then, <laughs> then handed it to him to put his order in and a pop-up came up that goes congrats <laughs> the number one order in the city it's thank hard. you for ordering three days in a row <laughs> honestly oh god it made me laugh it's one of those things that is technically harmless yeah but is a bit psychotic at the same time. i know like if on a first day you were handed the phone and it was like congrats you've ordered salisbury steak Five like nights in a row, you'd be like, ah. Uh, well, Salisbury steak is an inherently depressing meal. It is a depressing meal. Dumplings make me feel like you're a little you're bit fun. independent. On the go. Yeah. You know what you don't need a fork for? You're adventurous. Yeah. You dumplings. like soup inside of a contained device. <laughs> yeah. Soup. Du- and there needs to be more vegetarian soup dumplings because I feel like soup mm. dumplings are only meat. But you know what? I'd yeah. like a little. So I think a little fun. They are very fun because they're like um, water balloons. That like yeah. if you pop them, all the good gets out of there. And there's like no point to them. Saggy anymore. breast implants. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would like to issue <sighs> an apology. Uh oh. Oh well, yeah, we're getting controversial, you guys. No, we're getting. I guess what is the opposite of controversial? We are, you know, um, uh, aware. massaging whatever aware? the controversy was. No, it was. I've never gotten so many tweets and so many messages to About be like. What? It's not 
illegal to propose at Disneyland. Oh, they don't charge you. These people. They were on a stage. Yes. It was in France. They were on a yes. particular place in the park. Where that that's was only for performance limits. or something like that. Yeah. No, uh, we had all the people slide into the DMs. Even, do um, you remember who came to our uh, tour who was wearing your Austin wig? Yeah. Yeah, even him, who I love. I love. <gasps> he was like, no, 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 I've worked there. Like, we used to like have a contest to see who like got photographed the most proposals in a day uh, and i was like i'm sorry <laughs> like you, you spoke know, ill uh, of a company well first of all if you're gonna the speak happiest ill place on earth fuck them <laughs> <laughs> fuck them i want to know what the stage was that they were not yeah. allowed on to i think it was like a performer stage so uh, it was like you can't be up here like they're probably coming up to perform yeah, sometime yeah, yeah. soon but okay i had to do it because i've never gotten so many tweets at being like <sighs> How dare you besmirch the Disney did, brand? Look, I did go back. Elliot usually asked me a little bit. He's like, how would the podcast go? What'd you uh -oh. talk about? And I was like, we talked about that Disney proposal. And like, I didn't know where it was. And he was like, it was in France. Mm. It was not here. And I was like, oh, we immediately should have known that before no, we started I said, talking about I, I it. Like, of course, should have read anything. The former Disney employee yes. is like immediately like everyone else. That's not what. It sounds like this is not how it happened. How, however, it, I think it is true that you can't propose in front of a character or something, something like, like that. that. I, I don't know. <laughs> we got it. We have to stop. Oh my God. We have to, That's the name of our new something podcast. Something like that. You know, I said in unison. Something, something like, like that. that. <laughs> it legally gets us out of any problem in which yeah. someone says we've definitively announced oh something or said an opinion that is incorrect. That is our new catchphrase where it's just like two girls talk about news stories they didn't fully read no yeah you know, something like that they read a headline and then they assumed what the rest of it would be uh, wait hold on big big news uh oh I, i'm really curious to know what you feel about it mm. what about this fucking google employee that quit about oh, the, the ai because he says it's sentient oh yeah elliot's freaking out about is it is he well oh, he's the one that told he's... me about it and then posted it and he posted it on a story and like everyone from his program at school is like what's like, on oh. fire <laughs> well i read the interview between like a guy, the guy and the ai yeah it's um he's asking him philosophical questions and the ai being like i would not want someone to take advantage of me or it's like I about a broken feel. mirror or something. I don't know. I would. I was. <laughs> <laughs> like, is, you see where we call something, something like that. that. <laughs> so, something. Something like that. I thought it something. was. Elliot told me that it, the guy was like, "Okay, let me ask you some philosophical questions." And one yeah. was something along the lines of like being a mirror that breaks and like what is the actual like understanding there and it's like uh yeah you can't be put back together like you cannot wow. be it's all these like deep philosophical questions that it answered pretty intuitively oh god How and then he got, he got put on a sabbatical or i know he's out of there but he leaked the documents which i think is great because i think some other people outside of the uh administrators yep. at google should probably be adding a little bit to this conversation i think so too i love a little leak you know where i love it <laughs> in a potato corn chowder <laughs> we love a leak and not in my pants <laughs> not in my pants i like it in my soup. uh what do you think about it i mean i started reading it and just started like already like seeing the resistance like I already started seeing like the army of AI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out. Like, but also this this AI guy. First of all, AI is having a huge week because they also have that like AI art generator that everybody's doing. Oh, where yeah, I saw the Try Guys did it, and they look very different. I tried to do it. You know, I waited forty minutes today on a train for it to generate Grace Helbig breakdancing, and it never. <laughs> Wait, I don't even know what this is. It's like AI generator. Like you could put in anything, and it. Then the AI like shows you pictures of what they think that looks like. Oh, without any reference to you don't you only you put don't, in words. Yeah, you, you don't, don't put, put in, in an image or anything. Okay. And I was gonna try to get Grace Helbig breakdancing, memory uh, heart rapping, and we broke the system. <laughs> I was like, I thought it was like counting up to a hundred, and then it kept going. <laughs> and, 40, and after forty minutes, it said, "Actually, and it just we went, quit. It went, it went back. We, quit. we we saw it. It would destroy the world. It just turned into a screensaver, or it just bounces yes, yes. into the corner. Thousand, I used to watch the hell." out of that being uh, like you better hit that corner oh you better oh. what is it gonna hit that corner so anyway big week for ai between the Ooh. artistry and this article but no i like started reading it and then i was very i felt like a high 
Oh, totally. You know, Here's, um, this isn't AI, but I'll give you this is what I saw um, a week ago. This is also completely surprising news about um, the Wiggles. Oh, aren't they? Are so, they on tour? No, oh. uh, they're. I, I guess I think they're an Australian, technically. It's like, like some grown children's men. and women. Oh, um, because two of the Wiggles were married. Get out of here. Yeah, and then they broke up but kept performing together. Oh my God. It's the Fleetwood Mac of children's shows. Do you see that this is the, the tweet That's says what it the said? Fleetwood Mac of children's <laughs> entertainment? Oh my God. <laughs> Literally says, I didn't know two of the Wiggles were married and then broke up, but kept performing together. The Fleetwood Mac of children's <laughs> entertainment. <laughs> That's weird. Am I AI? AI? You might be AI. Oh but my then, God. But then the tweet <laughs> continues by Amy B at Arb says, okay. and then the lady wiggle <gasps> married someone no. else who was wiggle adjacent. So Watkins <laughs> announced Watkins, I guess, was the female performer announced her engagement to Oliver Bryan, who was a, mu- a musician that worked with the wiggles. Uh-oh. They began dating in December 2019 and May 2022. They were married. Shit. So the female Wiggle and the other Wiggle married divorce. She married the musician that travels with the Wiggles. This is drama. Can you? I <clears throat> want this docu series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am crave. I don't even know the Wiggles. It was right. one of those things that you know in your ether because like you babysat kids that watch the Wiggles. Well, the Wiggles. I. <laughs> this is the most <laughs> I've ever said the word Wiggle. The Wiggles. Okay, li- are there humans in the Teletubbies too? There are human beings inside of the costumes. No, of the well, I'm aware. <laughs> no, no, There's but, the baby in the sun that's a freak. But it's just the tubbies. And did they collab with the Wiggles? I feel like I'm, no. I think the Wiggles are on the Teletubbies. Wiggles are an Australian children's music group. And they don't do nothing. They don't got a mask. It's like four of them. And that's all they do. And that's all they do. And they're all humans. In, they're in like, they're basically um, Steve Jobs in color. Like they're all wearing Well, they look like a suicide cult. There's a lot of cult They're shit. Like Heaven's Gate. Have you ever seen an episode of Teletubbies? It's very cultish. Too. It's very sun worshiper. <laughs> yeah. I get it. No, I've never seen Teletubbies. Like, I only know because it was like so big, you know, and cultural zeitgeist. But same with Wiggles. I thought like at least there had to be like someone dressed up as a kangaroo or something. There Just are some, four like, grownups hanging out there's, singing. There's tons of other, I think, elements to it. But it started in 1991. Wow. And I think it's still going. No, my version of that when I was little was the elephant show. Skinnamarinky dinky dink, dink. Skinnamarinky do, motherfucker. I love you. And those people were too grown up to be doing that shit too. Yeah. But at least they had an animated elephant. But do you hear what those lyrics are? (laughs) Just a bunch of gobbledygook. And then I love Uh, you. I'm sorry. That was the Hey Jude of my preschool (laughs) years. It's like, I'm having a stroke. I'm having a stroke. I love you. (laughs) No, I remember. My cousin Hallie, her, I was like, I was older than her, but I'd still go visit. And like, there's probably, I think there's like a three or four, four year age different. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, I was like hanging out with my little kid, one girl cousin. And I remember being like skin and marinky dink, you know, all that. And she was like, my favorite band is the Beatles. (laughs) She was like six. And her parents like had her listen to real music. And I was like, oh, well, I'll go fuck myself. (laughs) I guess I'll go listen to Jesus Christ Superstar. (laughs) <laughs> go fuck myself. That's all I listen to, y'all. Oh my god. Uh, um, anyway, I thought that was a very interesting, and I cannot wait for like the VH1 has to be. behind the music. And they're still touring to this day. To this day, it's twenty. Uh, New Wiggles era was twenty thirteen to twenty twenty one, and now twenty twenty one to present is the expanded lineup on Fruit Salad TV. Fruit. <laughs> Salad TV. They, Australia is crazy. The Wiggles commemorated their 30th anniversary <laughs> in January 2021 with a song entitled "We're All Fruit Salad," <laughs> which sounds like something we would do in our show. <laughs> Containing lyrics centered yeah. around unity and acceptance, oh. and featuring guest performers of different cultural backgrounds. Okay. Yeah. We're all fruit salad. We're all fruit salad. I want we're all fruit salad merch. I mean, they probably have it. I want to eat it with my fingers. Whoa. We're all fruit salad. Okay. Mm. What a new there's wiggle a concept- fact. No, there's just someone named Katur- Katur- Katurna eh. Met, who is the longstanding choreographer for the Wiggles. And that's 
who I'd like to talk to. That's who I want the talking head in the documentary because I doubt these people. What's that choreography look like? It, touch, feel, touch step. I feel like jazz that's hand. As much as that's my advanced choreography. Lots of, lots of just circle over <laughs> yeah. your head, yeah, side to up. side. Then it comes down to be a hug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then it goes down and then it swoops. Oh no, that's literally Skinner Marie do yeah. <laughs> I love you in the morning and in the afternoon. I love, I love you in the evening, evening and underneath, underneath the moon. <laughs> oh, we've all been I just programmed. stole their choreo. Um, but like, are the Wiggles in their 60s now? Like, do you um, think they get fucked up after shows? Let's, let's be see. honest. Okay. Do you think like one of the Wiggles has a pill problem? I mean, that has to be. Or They're, like, you know what I mean? It's okay, Or are they so all this, like do Let's see, Anthony Field. I'm sorry if you Anthony guys are Anthony Field is 59 fans. years old and yeah. he's been in it since the beginning. Okay. Wow. He's an actor, songwriter, and producer. But I, it's got to be the easiest gig. If, someone's, if oh. someone said to me, hey, do you want to be in a very successful kids thing and make bank for 30 years, though you'll never be creatively satisfied? I'd be like, yeah, probably. Yeah. This guy, he is a <laughs> member of the Wiggles. Um... And of the pop band, the cockroaches. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, and then Jeff, Jeff Fat. <laughs> it's Jeff Fat. Jeff Fat. J F F F A T T. Yeah. Um, he is. Uh, double F, double T's. He's sixty-eight. He is one of the founding members of the Wiggles, and also wow. from the pop band, the cockroaches. <laughs> Wait. Are they all in the cockroaches? He and was, the cockroaches formed the Wiggles? I think some of them. Um, and then he was only in the Wiggles from 1991 to 2012. And he's the oldest technical member of the Wiggles lineup. I think they were all the cockroaches and were like, listen, our punk albums aren't flying off the shelves. I think we should be the Wiggles. <laughs> yeah, the cockroaches were an Australian pub rock band yep. active through the 1980s. Yep. Uh, and they became the Wiggles, man. Early in, Oh, only two of them. Oh, okay. Just the two. Of Jeff them. Fat and what's his face? <laughs> Anthony and Fat founded a children's music group, The Wiggles. There are some amazing doctors out there, but really the only ones that matter are the ones who actually take your insurance. With ZocDoc, you can focus on doctors who are in network, putting you on the path to see doctors who are right for you, okay? No more wasting time hunting down that chiropractor that Aunt Shirley tells you is a, uh, an angel worker, but he only takes cash, or that dentist that your coworker recommended who is completely out of network. Quit wasting your time, guys. Go on ZocDoc. You plug in all your information and it shows you exactly what you're looking for, where it is on the map near you, that accepts your insurance, so you can get in there and get that toothache fixed ASAP. I've used SockDoc to find my gynecologist, um, my dentist, oh, uh, an allergy test, an optometrist. I legit use this app constantly. My schedule is so all over the place, I can't make a doctor's appointment for weeks in advance. I don't know if something's going to pop up and I'm going to be out of town. But with SockDoc, I literally look it up and have been seen the very next morning. I'm talking like within a 12 hour window. So you can read up on local doctors, get verified patient reviews and see what other real humans have to say about your visit. If you go to ZocDoc.com, choose a time slot and whether you want to see the doctor in person or you can do a video visit. Look at you tech savvy. And just like that, you're booked. Every month, millions of people use ZocDoc and you should be one of them. I am telling you, go to ZocDoc.com slash weird and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for a top rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. Like I said, that's Z O C D O C dot com slash weird. ZocDoc dot com slash weird. Oh, that is a tongue twister. I'm going to have to go to a tongue doctor. Finding all of your grocery items in one place at an affordable price is almost impossible. However, with Thrive Market, you can get everything you need and so much more. With Thrive Market, you can shop everything from healthy pantry essentials and sustainable meat and seafood to non-toxic cleaning and beauty products, all delivered right to your door. And if you find a price lower elsewhere, Thrive Market will match it. Thrive Market carefully vets each and every item so you can trust that if they sell it, it's probably the highest quality available. Finding everything you need is super easy on Thrive Market because you can filter by 90 90 plus values and lifestyles to find what works for you. Shop by what you eat, what matters the most to you. With over 5,000 food, home, and beauty products, finding what you need is easy with Thrive Market. So if you're looking for plant-based, keto, gluten-free,
free, zero waste, BIPOC owned businesses. Thrive Market has you covered. When you join Thrive Market, you're joining a community of 1 million plus members and sponsoring a family in need. I love Thrive Market. I recently went and bought a bunch of organic makeup, especially mascara, because I was finding I was getting itchy eyes, <laughs> little raccoon itchy eyes, and I bought this Pacifica Stellar Gaze, which I love. One, the packaging's beautiful, it's organic, it doesn't irritate my eyes as much and so you can find whatever is necessary for you and with their fast and free carbon neutral shipping you're also bettering the planet so join thrive market today and get 80 dollars in free groceries at thrive t-h-r-i-v-e market.com slash t-m-g-w to get 80 dollars in free groceries that's thrive market.com slash t-m-g-w thrive market.com slash t-m-g-w Speaking of cockroaches. Yeah. I saw this story. I didn't read it, though. Oh, no. It's not a story. It's just something someone told me today. Oh, what? Um, well, I was uh, I was at my friend Megan's house, and she was talking about this mutual person we know. And I was like, what do, what do they do? And it was like, oh, odd jobs, whatever. Mm-hmm. And she was like, oh, he just posted something on Instagram, whatever. It was for a, I guess, like a pesticide, like a, what is it called? What? Exterminator company. Uh-huh. Being like, would you be willing to be a part of a test where basically they release? Yeah. Like, uh, did you see it? I saw it on uh, the weird news site that we get all of our weird news from that they're like, we'll pay you a couple thousand dollars. If we can release like a hundred cockroaches in in your your home and and see if it works. Yeah. I was like, what? Who? No. No. No, no, absolutely not. <laughs> no. That's a no for me. And for those reasons, I'm out. But I would be like, do, do I have to live here? Like, is that part of the is that part of the mystique is like, oh, you have to live amongst these cockroaches. And otherwise, yeah, why wouldn't, they, why wouldn't they like get an abandoned facility? That's what I'm saying. Oh, because they like, no, we want you to take someone's home or like we want you to live there normally and like see about their your human smells. And like if the you're eating chowder, if they stuff. like chowder, <laughs> if they like if they like the co- the copious amounts of corn chowder you're coming home with. We'll see does how that, they react. Does to that it. affect their, does that their, affect their sex their mood life <laughs> and their reproductive schedules? <laughs> Is it a deterrent or I does was like, it encourage? I'm it? not scared of cockroaches, but remember when the, I walked past the, my liquor store a couple months ago and the guy had the remote control cockroach and it scared the shit out of yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I love that guy. But I could. I don't think I could do it. I think if uh-uh. it was like, hey. Even if it was like little spiders, I could deal. Well, I wouldn't Cockroaches be. Cockroaches are too meaty. It would require inherent trust mm. that these uh, exterminators have completely rid the problem when they're done with their experiment. That's what I'm saying. And, and I trust I no one to finish no, anything. No, no, no. I don't trust anyone about anything. No. <laughs> so there's that. Something like that. Um, <laughs> well, this is a, I saw this yeah. um, that made me think of Chip. Because oh. he's got to try this. Oh. It's an article that said British man throws tortilla oh. more than 90 feet <gasps> for Guinness World Record. And I'm going, Chip can beat that. Whoa. <laughs> I think you're right. I feel like he put his Frisbee wow. towel. See, this is more of a Frisbee than uh, disc golf, I guess. I don't know. This is me speaking uh, completely no, no, uneducated. It's, it's the same thing. It's like, it's just not like a... I mean, discs are frisbees. They're just like they have yeah. a smaller lip and different weights and thicknesses. Right? Is like what is she even saying right now? <laughs> so he managed the distance of ninety feet oh. eleven inches. Here's what I want to know: Was he standing at an elevation so that way, like, it had longer to mm. go because it had longer like elevation to fall? It's a British man. Okay. So I don't okay. know if that tells us anything. I wonder if it was. What I want to know. Here's here's the rules I'd like to hear. Yeah. Before I start the Eye of the Tiger training montage yeah, yeah, with yeah. tortillas with my boyfriend. <laughs> As I'm over there. He's just throwing tortillas. Just As I'm doing tongue exercises to make my tongue yeah. thicker. 
Um, I want to know, like, because if I was up here and threw a tortilla from my hotel room, right. I could obviously get it further than someone at ground level. You know I what I mean? Because it has more option to, like, hit a wind. I think this is probably pretty level. It said that uh, the record stood at 30 feet one inch when he decided to break it. Oh, wow. He really broke it. Yeah. He achieved a throw of 54 feet five inches okay. uh, by David Rush, someone different. And then he and then miles so this guy miles and david rush are going back and forth on it we love a rivalry about something that's so stupid yeah but this guy is really sweet because he's like attempting this gave me something to focus on during lockdown which helped my mental health (laughs) oh my god and actually breaking the world record will really prove those efforts weren't in vain i mean wait is he setting that up so that people won't break it because we don't want to break him no it sounds like he's really riding i think he's really uh proving to people that were like you fixated on something mm. incredibly stupid oh, we were yeah. all very worried about you and True. he goes i broke a record and everyone's like okay yeah miles is doing Party great trick. <laughs> wait is it flour or corn oh good question what's the diameter because is it like a burrito tortilla or like a taco tortilla i haven't looked at those details they don't cite them in this article it just says tortilla so all right um, i'm gonna have to get some some specifics. facts to see if they're comparable to a disc because th- I mean that's a fun one to I'd have. love to see how far in in chip without any like practice yeah just how far like he actually throws it because in my mind I'm like 90 feet that's that's not that far he could probably it's, do it and then maybe that's really far. far I have no idea I Isn't can't it? throw shit wait a football field is 300 feet right because it's 100 yards but a, a tortilla that's not cooked that's all floppy you well know? I well then again here's the follow-up question I had yeah can it be stale? Probably or not. Or is it a fresh? I think it has to be fresh. I like like, like, like how Chipotle like steams theirs so that they're more malleable <laughs> to wrap as the baby burrito. Yeah, it's just in a damp paper towel coming out of the uh, microwave. Here you go. My uh, God, I had a burrito last night. Good for you. $25. Wow. And it was all rice. <laughs> <laughs> I was livid. Did you leave a comment? You tell him what's up? No. <laughs> you got a $25 burrito? I couldn't believe it. I had no idea it was $25. We went to this vegan place that like I loved in New York, but normally uh-huh. I would get like a, a, an acorn squash filled with risotto and fresh spinach and like like a beautiful, nice vegan meal, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I was like, this menu is different now. <laughs> <laughs> Memory does not compute. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> Give me burrito, please. And then it came out and I was like, that's a cute little burrito. And then we got the bill and I said, <laughs> and then, like, we, this woman is an AI like, robot that is malfunctioning. I am malfunctioning. <laughs> Hence why I needed a hearty chowder today. I get because it. I couldn't, I was still full. I was still hungry from last it. night. I get it. Oh my God. What else oh is going God. on? I have some oh. other things. Oh, I do too. Go ahead. Did you hear about the little dachshund that got found in Albany, New York? Uh, no. Okay, a little. There was this woman. I'll, I'll just hide my screen from you. I can't. I'm not looking. There was this woman, Chelsea Blackwell, mm-hmm. who little 15 year old dog. So like you know, already like probably not the best vision. Yeah, and yeah, hearing, yeah. Senior got loose from her house. Oh. And she was like freaking out, a little blue dachshund, and was driving around and asking people like, has anybody seen the dog? Like, yeah. what's going on? And then she gets like, she sees like there's like six cop cars or something and she's uh, eight police cars with and there's cameras and stuff. And she's like, I figured someone got shot. Yeah. Right. And she goes and she's like, has anyone seen my little dog? And they're like, oh, yes. Here, call this woman. She has it. Calls the woman. It's Hillary Swank. <laughs> She was filming something there. <laughs> Wait, she what? filmed the dog. <laughs> what? So she walks onto a set, so, and so the little dog found its way to a set. Hillary Swank was like, "Uh oh, little dog!" Grabs the dog, and then like uh, gives it back to her. And I was like, "Could you imagine? Amazing. I, like this would be weird if it was in New York or LA, but like being in random Albany and Hillary Swank, million dollar baby, the next Karate Kid, the bitch from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, all of them gives you your little dog back. That little dog knew what it was doing. It was Bad like, dog. we don't get celebrities in this town. I'm gonna shoot my shot. Right right I'm, now. About, I'm about to get swanky. <laughs> I loved that. That is really incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, have you heard the story 
of a Indiana. They caught this catfish. Oh God, catfish um, are so weird. And this is a, the weirdest of the catfish. Get it, lay it on me. The guy was um took the catfish home. To started, what? Wait for food, right? Not yeah. as like a pet. No, okay. not as a pet. So <laughs> cleaning the catfish at home. Oh no. With like his little daughter and his wife. Oh God. And there was just a full on dildo inside the catfish. <laughs> would say they're calling it a phallic adult toy <laughs> they no. got it on the boat and they thought the stomach was huge they thought oh. it had swallowed some eggs or some smaller creatures he took it home and he found a foam ball a part of a fish and the quote other object <laughs> and the other object no. was a phallic sex toy <laughs> no. and so in this full-on catfish was a full dildo, dildo. <laughs> <laughs> oh. and he said his wife and, and his daughter were there his wife had to like pull his daughter away when he got oh. to the dildo part of the inside of the catfish my god <laughs> and, did they still eat it uh that is tbd uh they just said that they covered the daughter's eyes to avert her gaze uh to avert her gaze, <laughs> to avert her gaze. <laughs> like um, do you think someone was just dilding out by the lake and then said oh, oh gotta go and just chucked well, it into the lake and then I he was like gobble, gobble, gobble. It's, it's indiana because <laughs> when you so, first said it i said i was thinking <laughs> Who did bad things to this catfish oh, before no. I realized I'm the thinking, catfish ate the dildo? No, I'm thinking someone got rid of their dildo yeah. in the either like, we're done with this or like, you'll never see this again. <laughs> and then I thought the catfish was like, here's mm. something that looks oh, like it's worm? swimming in this. Who's this what's big this worm? eel right here? Thank God. I ate the whole thing. Because at first I was truly like, oh, there's some redneck who fucks catfish. <laughs> 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 and I was like, where would you even put it? I guess in the mouth, but yeah. oh my God. Yeah, and this oh thing my God. ate the whole thing. I would get that dildo bronzed. I mean, yeah, there's uh, they keep blurring it out in all the pictures of it. You can't really see it. But yeah, in the Ohio River, it was caught. So people are doing some... Uh, panky, panky, stanky, stanky. Wild stuff up there. So be careful where you're throwing your... You yeah. know, they say this about the plastic yeah, on yeah, beer yeah. cans mm -hmm. and now you gotta be careful where you're throwing your dildos guys dildos aren't that cheap and Three also you just, go, just chuck make, it out wish, there. make a wish i mean it does look like a fish <laughs> jumping out of water when it is <laughs> oh my god people out there skipping dildos on a summer day i know wow i love that story so much made me laugh made me laugh oh i'm gonna have that image in my head for so long wow well we have so many shows to do so many shows and to do this week. Three. um <laughs> and we think they're pretty sold out they um, are sold out yeah but if you show up and you want to take it there's call the theater because the actual mm -hmm. websites i know my stepmom was looking at the philly one um the websites aren't updating in real time if anyone like cancels their tickets or whatever so yeah, call then, the theater and itself. then i saw brooklyn bell house instagram story at our show yesterday with the wrong day they said wednesday i said and that show is thursday <laughs> <laughs> So people, yeah. we're, we're really top priority to a we lot really of people. Are. <laughs> we are. No, but there might be some tickets, uh, but I can guarantee one thing. You mm. will not find them by sliding it onto our DMs. I'm very sorry for anyone who's trying to sell a ticket yeah. or get more information. We ain't got it. Yeah. And uh, well, for anyone I that wish I could. has VIP tickets right now, know that we do our VIP meet and greets after, after the, the show. show. Um, and that's the only kind of information that I can that, take Yeah, you don't have to get there early for yeah. the meet and greet. But anyways, or something like that. Something like that. Oh, my God. Woo! We'll meet Weird Al Skanky Bitch and Grace Helbig are going to hit the road. This got weird.